Working for free means you don't respect yourself. And there's a lot of guys in the online space who are telling you to work for free, go get testimonials, go get client case studies, go deliver people some results, and then you can use that to go get more clients later on. Now, this is completely counterintuitive, and you don't have to do this. And if you do do this, you need to stop doing it right now. Because if you're doing this, like I said, you don't respect yourself, and your clients are certainly not going to respect you either. Now, David, why is this the case? Well, if you are going to work for someone for free, that means it's probably not valuable. If I gave away everything that I know for free, or I gave away free consulting or free mentorship or anything like that, then no one would think it's valuable. These videos that I make are only 10 to 15% of what I actually know. Imagine that. So when you're going into business and you think that, oh, I need all this experience, I need all these testimonials, I need all these case studies, well, you don't because it's not true. And I'm gonna give you an example here. So when I first started out, I was charging, my first setup fee that I charged was with $1,000. And I did that first deal in 24 hours of me saying, okay, I'm gonna start my agency. When I got better at delivering the service, I started charging more. A few thousand here, a few thousand here. For, we worked our way up to about $4,000 on the front end for setup. So I just knew if I could figure out how to sell it and figure out how to make the deals make sense for myself and for the client, for the customer, then figure it out on the back end in terms of the service delivery, then I knew I was gonna make money, I knew I was gonna get paid. And when you work for free, if you're working with people, like if you're working for people with people for free and you're saying that you have clients, you don't have clients, you don't even have a business. Because if you're not making money with the thing that you're doing, you literally don't have a business. Like you don't have a business. So sales is always gonna be the lifeblood of your business. Sales, getting money in the door, going out and acquiring customers and doing deals is always going to be at the forefront. Acquisition always has to be at the forefront. Now, you need to respect yourself enough to demand to be paid for your time and for your labor. Going out and getting people who are not successful or people who are struggling in their business and trying to do something in order to deliver for them and try to make them money so that you can say, hey, we made this guy an extra $3,000, it's just not going to move the needle for you because these people don't even respect you enough to pay you for your time. And it's a very bad way to start a business relationship. And the only time I ever recommend you work for free is if you have some sort of mentorship or some sort of way to get paid on the back end. Now, when I was 21 years old, I was selling insurance for a summer and I was selling insurance, financial advisory services and asset management. And I closed a $250,000 deal towards the end of that summer. I was cold calling, but what I found really valuable about it and I wasn't licensed, so I didn't get paid anything on the deal. And on asset management deals, you really don't get paid much versus an insurance deal. And I found it really valuable because I got to spend time with other guys who were relatively successful, making a few hundred thousand dollars a year in sales or a hundred grand a year in sales. And they taught me a lot about how to sell. And I really learned the structure of the sales process. I got to watch these guys day in and day out. And I knew if I would get licensed and I would sell these deals myself, then okay, I would be compensated for the money that I brought into the company. I ended up leaving because it just wasn't the opportunity for me. But I had that mentorship available, which is why I did the job on a commission only basis for a summer for free, essentially. And it was very valuable to me. But when you work with clients and you just get an understanding, like so many people focus on this service delivery thing. They focus on, Oh, I have to learn how to write the email copy. I have to learn how to mess around with Facebook. You can mess around with Facebook and learn how to do this stuff yourself. All you need is money in order to test stuff. So delivering for these people for free, you guys got to structure something where you get paid. I really don't like how the space perpetuates this idea of working for free. It means you don't value yourself. It means you don't respect yourself. And it's literally almost equivalent to slavery because you're just working, 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 spending tens or even hundreds of hours per month working for people who don't even have the respect to pay you. Really bad way to do business. So we're now going to talk about how to structure deals. If you do get people in the door who you want to deliver for and how to get this experience, but also be compensated for it. Now, the best way to do this is pay on performance. The best hands down way is pay on performance. And I'll reiterate that because on performance deals and structuring deals on a performance basis, where you take a percentage of the upside revenue that you create for the customer 
is the best way to essentially work for free, but you have some way of guaranteeing payment. Now, also, you want to make sure that you have an agreement, you have a contract. When you're selling, by the way, always call it in, a, in an agreement, never call it a contract. Contract is negative where agreement is positive. So make sure that you have things set up, like you get a credit card on file for your customer, right? Make sure that you're constantly tracking the attribution of the results and the things that you are delivering for the customer. Make sure that the customer and the client is going to be transparent with you. Make sure you have access to the payment processor account. Make sure you have access to the attribution software. If you're writing emails, make the Klaviyo tracks it. ConvertKit tracks it. ActiveCampaign tracks it. Everything tracks it. So Facebook Ads Manager tracks it. So when you're looking at getting into the agency business or looking at getting into business in general and you're going to be doing a service-based business, SMMA, whatever, and you're working with clients, just make sure that you can get paid. Make sure that eventually there is some way if you deliver, if you do what you say you're going to do, you get paid on the back end. Never, ever, 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 ever work for free. If you're watching my videos, I do not want you to be broke. I want you to be successful. Working for free is a very easy way to get burned out, stay broke, not make any money, and then burn out on the business and quit the business and then go back to doing whatever you're doing before because you just simply can't hack it. So you guys got to figure out how to sell stuff first, always. You have to be able to respect yourself enough to say, look, we'll do the work for free, but we need it. We need some sort of compensation. I would love to, I would love to get you guys results. I would love to work with you, but we need some sort of compensation, whether it's a pay on performance or it's a setup or something like that, or just one, a one-time fee for the month. So we can see how everything goes just because we need to be paid for our time and effort and labor. Okay. So like I said, if I gave everything away for free, no one would think it's valuable. So and I do have some notes here for the video. So I, I just need you guys to understand, like there's a, those memes where kids are in college and they're saying, oh, I'm trying to apply for a job, but the job's requiring three years of experience and all this stuff. And they can't get experience without a job, right? So you need ways to get experience, but you need to be paid for your time, effort, and labor. Whatever business model that you're going to partake in or participate in, whether it's ads for roofers or ads for home services or HVAC or landscaping or email marketing for e-commerce or email copywriting, direct response for info products or something like that. Make sure that you have some way of attributing all of the money that is made with the person that you're working with. Look and see if your stuff converts or it doesn't convert. You can sit there and practice the service delivery on your own until the cows come home, until the sun just explodes and destroys the earth and you're never going to make any money unless you sell it. So the entire way that you structure these deals. So you're going to want something called an ACH agreement, which means an automatic clearinghouse transfer. Uh, this essentially is a part, a stipulation in your contract or in your agreement that says basically, Hey, we just want to get a card on file just so that we can guarantee that we get compensated for our services. If someone doesn't want to agree to that on a performance basis, then please do not work with them. Working with people who are unsuccessful, working with struggling business owners is a really, really, really hard thing to do. The value of a dollar to someone who is making 5K a month or 2K a month is a lot more than someone who's making 200K a month. The people who are making 200K a month are a lot more willing to spend money so it's just simply because they have money. They try stuff all the time. Right? I have an old consulting client who spends tons of money. I was having dinner with him this weekend here in LA. He makes loads of money and he buys stuff all the time just to try it out. He buys people's time. He buys people's mentorship, buys people's services, just to try it out, see how it works. And if it doesn't go well, then okay, he takes the $2,000 hit and then learns from it and then says, okay, well, where can we improve to make this better? So the best way to get clients if you're starting out and you are really unsure of yourself about demanding money for your service is simply just structuring a performance deal, right? Stipulate, hey, we just want a 20% or a 5% or even a 3% or 10% upside revenue or 10% of the upside revenue that's created in the business from what we, we do. So if you have a business, and I'll give a mathematical example here, if you're working with a business that's doing $100,000 a month, and you come in and you make them $110,000 a month, and you charge 10% of the 10, you charge them 10% of the $10,000 that you made them, you get paid a grant, okay? 
This is a very easy way to structure deals because the business owner and the person that you're working with, the client, is now going to see, okay, well, they came in, we were doing 100K, now we're doing 110K. We attributed the 10K to what they did. Okay, we owe him a grand. That's more than fair. After what the profit margins are, maybe they're doing 30% profit margins. Okay, they make 3K, they pay you 1K, 2K profit net left over. So the deal makes financial sense for them. Every single deal that you guys do, if you're running an agency, you're running a social media marketing agency, SMMA, service-based business, it has to make financial sense because you are selling money at a discount. Every single agency deal is you give me 3K today and I will make you 30K over the next three months or 50K or 100K or whatever it may be. Every advertising deal is saying, hey, look, you pay us $4,000 a month to run the ads or $2,000 or $1,000 a month to run the ads or $1,000 setup fee plus $2,000, all different types of deal structures. And we'll run the ads, you're gonna be responsible for the ad spend, but we're going to hopefully make you X amount more in the next one to three to six months. So, people who tell you to work for free are dumb. You should never work for free if you are not compensated in some way. Experience is a very good teacher, and you have to understand that if you're gonna just sit there and get beat over the head and work with people for free just to learn the service, you are in a very bad business model and you're in a very bad way and bad shape in order for the, to, do, to do business in the future. You guys gotta respect yourselves. You want your clients to respect you. You want your clients to pay you loads of money because you're making them loads of money. The easiest way to do that, structure and performance deals of the upside revenue in the business, not the entire business. No business owner in the right mind is gonna say, yeah, I'll fork over 35% of the company to some random guy on the internet who just hit me up and had a 30 minute sales goal. It's just not happening. I'm not gonna get into equity deal structures here. But if you are not demanding payment for your time, labor, services, I don't care how bad you are. If you're really unsure of yourself, just charge a few hundred dollars, say 500 bucks, right? But you guys got to make sure you're getting money in the door and you have a chance at the back end to be compensated for what it is that you are doing for the client. This is probably one of the more important topics that I wanted to cover here on this channel, just simply because I just see too many people going wrong. I get like 50 messages a day across Instagram, across Twitter, and I get YouTube comments now, which is interesting of like, hey, I'll do this for free. How do I work? Can I work for you for free? Like, no, because I have a network of hundreds of people who can do what it is that you're trying to offer. And they're a lot better than you at doing it. Because if you're working for free, that means it's not valuable. I'm more than happy to do performance deals with competent people who have a lot of results because those make sense for me. But that's just where I'm at. I don't usually pay retainers because I can structure performance deals because I want people to be compensated greatly if they bring revenue into the business. The worst thing that you could possibly do as a business owner is pay some sort of fee and just get absolutely burnt. And this is why agencies get such a bad rap. People will go and they'll charge, you know, five grand on a retainer basis to a company that's doing 30 K a month in revenue. Like this company just can't sit, it simply can't afford it. They literally can. If they're doing 30K in top line, they can't afford 5K. But what they can afford is a 10% performance basis fee on top of what they're doing if you come in and you bring revenue to the company. So make sure that when you guys are doing these deals and you guys are pitching these clients and you guys are pitching these prospects, that you are doing the best you can to make the deal make financial sense for the business owner, for the person that you're trying to pitch. A lot of you guys are selling and you're just trying to get your pitch out. You guys are just, oh, uh, we'll do this 20%, 20% here, 15% there. Like there's only 100% of a business. And if you account for expenses and profit margin and taxes and all the other expenses that are required to run a successful business, wherever you are, you have to understand that these people don't have as much money as you think. The business, that I remember working with a company that did, was doing $250,000 a month and they had like 20 grand left over. I couldn't sell them a $5,000 a month thing because that's before the owner even paid themselves. So the deals have to make financial sense. Performance basis is the easiest way to get customers if you want to go that route of doing the work up front and then getting something on the back end. If you're a savage 
then you just go in and say, hey, we charge this fee and then we charge a performance fee. There's a bunch of different levels. You have performance only, you have retainer only, or you have setup only on the front end. And then you have performance plus retainer, which is a more complex deal structure in order to sell because you have to be really good at what you're doing. There's a lot of guys who can do that, but there's even more people who can't do that. And then you have something called equity deal structures where you are now a partner in the business on a consultant basis or a actual agency basis where you essentially work as their in-house team. Now that's a more complicated deal structure. I'm not gonna get fully into it here. Structure your deals to make financial sense. I don't want you guys watching my videos and pitching people and saying, oh, I will work for free in order for experience and testimonial. Because I'll tell you the truth, clients and prospects don't care about testimonials as much as you think. They're not gonna sit there and watch your 50 client testimonials because they're running a business. They don't have time to sit there and watch all of your client testimonials and look at all of your client results. You can send that information over to them if they ask for it. But most of the time, they're not gonna care. They're gonna say, can this guy do the job? Can this guy actually come into my business and help me make more money? Why is that? And all you need to do from the sales side is just simply tell them. People wanna be told, they don't wanna be sold. You go and you simply tell them, hey look, here's how this makes sense for you, here's how it makes financial sense for you. You can use the ROI breakdown video that I did here on YouTube to get more information on exactly how to make deals make financial sense for business owners. But this is the easiest way to do it. You come in, you work on a performance basis, and instead of working for free, you're just compensated for the money that you bring into the business. And if you suck, well, then you get all this feedback. And now you have all this feedback and you realize, okay, well, now I know how to make my service better. If you were able to sell the deal and get the customer to say yes, then you're doing something right. If you're not able to deliver results, then you know that you have a delivery bottleneck. So I encourage you and I implore you to please respect yourself, respect your time, respect your business, and get your clients to respect you so that you can make more money. Thank you for watching, guys. My name is David. Much love. And like I said, the reason I'm making these videos is I don't want you to be broke. I don't want you to listen to anyone else if you're watching this stuff. And the information that I give in these videos, like I said, it's only 10 to 15% of what I know. Everything else is behind a paywall. If you are interested in getting some free stuff, go ahead and click the link in the bio, or not the bio, the link in the description. Go ahead, get access to that. It's going to help you in your sales process. It's going to help you make more sales. It's completely free. On top of that, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.